Game week 22 team selection time. Finally, we can say that game week 22 starts tomorrow. So today I'm going to have a look at what I plan on doing with my team. We're going to talk about potential transfers, updates to the likes of Erling Haaland, whether I think I can bring him in. I've got two free transfers as well with 2.5 million in the bank. So there is a reasonable amount I can do with my team. We've had double game week announcements. We've had blank game weeks. So much has finally happened in the build up to game week 22 and it is time to decide what I'm going to do with my team. Welcome back everyone, FPL Harry here. Before we dive in, 2,000 likes on the video is the aim to subscribe if you are new around here. Finally, FPL is back. I know Game Week 21 feels like a long time ago, so we won't dwell on it too much. Just to let you know, I did get a small red arrow. I dropped from about 64k to 78k. It was going okay, but that Liverpool result, given that Darwin and Jota had reasonable amounts of ownership, was enough to give me a small red arrow. Unfortunately, I did Captain Saka. I did have Gabriel. So that late call where they took away the Gabriel goal and then have given it back over the past couple of days. But unfortunately, because the game week has closed means I don't get the points there. I did start double Newcastle, so Gordon coming in was, I'm happy with that. Didn't decide to make a transfer and most of the players I would have bought last week didn't outscore Gordon. So happy I decided to roll the second transfer, but it was a red arrow. Now, the best way for me to explain how Game Week 22 looks at the moment is just to show you what my team looks like before I make any transfers. It's possible I make one transfer or use both of my transfers this week. So, at the moment, I'm lining up with a 3-4-3. We've got Ariola in goal. We've got Pedro Porro, Gabriel, and Trent Alexander-Arnold in defence. Trent, of course, was on the bench for Liverpool in their FA Cup tie. He came off the bench, so he's had minutes, so I'm pretty confident he's going to be okay to start that Chelsea game. Into midfield, we've got Foden, who was my transfer transfer in last week. We have Palmer. Now Palmer's great, but he does have difficult fits this week away at Liverpool. But we've seen previously that all it takes is a penalty and suddenly he's in the points. So I'm not massively against starting him this week, nor am I against starting Saka. Now Saka has been disappointing recently, but it is an easy game against Nottingham Forest. They've also had an eight-day gap since their last game against Crystal Palace in game week 21, whereas Nottingham Forest have just played in the FA Cup, whereas Arsenal, of course, are out of the FA Cup. So they've had a big rest as well to prepare for this game. And then the final one is Anthony Gordon, who we'll come back to, probably feels like the weak link in my starting lineup this week. Alvarez up front with Solanke and with Watkins. There have been a lack of returns in my forward line at the moment, but I don't necessarily feel like there's a forward that I want this week unless Erling Haaland is declared fit by Pep. So it's probably worth covering that. Right now, I'm not expecting Haaland to start and I'm not expecting us to get news that Haaland is going to start. What my opinion is, is that he might make the bench at home to Burnley and then he might come on for a few minutes. But Pep did say that it has been a fracture. So a couple of weeks ago, or actually just before Christmas, he said, don't call it a fracture. It's not a fracture. It's just a stress fracture, whatever that meant. But recently he's come out and said, basically, they got it wrong. It's worse than they feared. And it was a fracture. But hopefully he's going to be back for the Burnley game or, or, or soon after. So I don't plan on bringing in Haaland yet, which means I don't plan on making a transfer in my forward line yet. Looking at my starting 11, of course, I've got Salah on my bench. I then also got Trippi on my bench, who's yellow flag at the moment. But Salah is the big one. Salah is is the one that I would look to transfer out. And it would make sense to sell Salah, buy a midfielder that I like this week and replace Gordon, who is, of course, my weak link going away to Aston Villa this week, given how good Aston Villa have been at home. However, when you look at my midfield for game week 23, so not this week, game week 23 and game week 24, I basically have to find one of the midfielders in both of these screenshots that I want to bench next week and then the week after as well. So, Bringing in a midfielder for Salah might seem like a great idea on paper, but then it means I have to bench one of these midfielders in both game week 23 and game week 24, which does put me off a little bit, giving myself a benching headache. It's not something I massively want to do, but I've got two free transfers, so I basically feel like I'm forced into it. The other thing I could do, depending on Trippier news, depending on Charlie Taylor news, is make a defensive transfer. It could be for an eye on the upcoming double game weeks, an eye on upcoming blank game week in game week 26, game week 29 to help strengthen my bench a little bit. But I do feel like I'm missing a strong midfielder this week when everyone's lining up with the likes of De Bruyne, the likes of Richarlison, the likes of Diego Jota. And currently I'm playing Anthony Gordon. So selling Salah 
feels like the best option. It also frees up the money I need to bring Haaland back in. So I only have 2.5 million in the bank. So downgrading Salah to a cheaper option would leave me the money I would need to do Haaland for one transfer for Alvarez probably next week. So looking at potential replacements for Salah. So of course we're expecting Salah still to be out until game week 24 at the very earliest, but probably back in contention around game week 25, given the sort of three to four week timeline that we were originally given. Of course, we might get a press conference from Klopp going into Tuesday that just might give us a bit of an update because he is continuing and has been doing his rehabilitation in Liverpool rather than whilst with Egypt in the African Cup of Nations. The top three options that I look at, so Kevin De Bruyne, I could just go there. He has six games between game week 22 and game week 26. If I said he starts three of them, would I be happy enough with that? A couple of sub appearances, but does have the double, does have a good fixture in game week 26, plus plays Burnley at home this week. My doubt is if he starts that Burnley fixture. I do really like him over that course of games, but could I wait a week to go and buy him? Plus, he locks me out of Haaland for one transfer next week. So Salah down to De Bruyne doesn't leave me enough money for Alvarez up to Haaland next week. And I would have to use my second transfer on something else to free up the remainder of that money. So that makes De Bruyne a little bit more difficult this week. Next up is Richarlison. Now, the fixtures short-term are great, and he's actually one of the players... I fear most going into game week 22 alone at home to Brentford. I think he's a great captaincy option. We'll talk about that in my video tomorrow. But I really like him. Plus the fixtures are there. Plus they have a guaranteed fixture in game week 29 away at Fulham already. The only issue is, is they blank in game week 26. I already have Porro. I have Trent. I have Palmer. And in theory, Salah at the moment, but he'd leave for Richarlison. So that's four players blanking in 26 if I buy Richarlison, which does leave me a little bit short for that week. Now, a lot of people might not necessarily be putting out 11 players that week, but I do have an eye on whether it's the right thing to do going into game week 26. The other one actually is Eze, and there are a few reasons for Eze. So Crystal Palace have been poor, and I get that. But Sheffield United at home this week and then game week 23 and 24, whilst I said that I've got a benching headache that week, they play Brighton away and Chelsea at home. So those are two fixtures that I in theory could bench Eze in. And then they have some decent fixtures after that as well. And he's on all set pieces while Elise is out. And he's definitely on penalties while Elise is out as well. So it's not the most exciting pick, but he is cheaper than the others. So it helps with money for the likes of Haaland. And maybe it's the best move for the number of starts helping to rotate into my midfield and for the upcoming blank game weeks. Now, it is possible that I decide not to make that midfield move. I keep Salah until we know a little bit more information and I decide to make another move in my team, which would probably be a defensive transfer. Taylor or Trippier could go. Trippier could go if he's potentially ruled out for that game. In theory, Gabriel is also flagged. So if he was ruled out, he could go. Or Charlie Taylor also flagged, right? I have a lot of flag defenders this week is the point. There are two defenders I look at. Purvis Estupanan of Brighton and then Carl Walker at Manchester City. Estupanan we've spoken about so much over the past couple of weeks and the past couple of game weeks. I don't feel like I need to drill home anymore about why I like him as an asset, but basically fixtures are good. Attacking threat is good. He's on some set pieces and the clean sheet and bonus is there. We've seen it recently. Plus, he does play in game week 26 and have a nice fixture. The other one is Carl Walker. Again, a good fixture this week. I don't massively need a defender this week, but it's not the end of the world playing him at Burnley at home. Of course, has the double in game week 25 and then plays Bournemouth away in game week 26. It's pretty close between these two. In theory... Carl Walker has the extra fixture. He plays for a better defence, but a Stupinan feels more explosive out of the two. So in terms of my lineup, in goal, we are going to go with Ariola, as I saw before, over Dubravka. Just playing him at home to Bournemouth feels like a better option than Dubravka away at Aston Villa. I think it might be quite close in terms of actually who scores more points. This might go down to the wire, actually, about who I start, because I do think Bournemouth will probably score against West Ham, but then I do expect Aston Villa to score as well. Into defence, it is Pedro Porro. It's Gabriel at the moment, who's currently flagged, and then Trent Alexander-Arnold as well. Pretty happy with the defence. Of course, I've got Trippi on my bench if I need to have cover this week. Into midfield, so I've got Foden at home to Burnley. Love him as an asset and think he's a better long-term pick than De Bruyne. Saka and Palmer I really like. My planned transfer this week is to sell Salah and it is to go to Richarlison. I do think it gives me a bit of a headache between now and game week 26 when he blanks. 
but I would potentially consider selling some of my other players going into that blank. And I do think Richarlison playing up front for Spurs is a really nice pick. Plus, he might be on penalties. Now, I could in theory go to Madison, who looks like he's going to be back for Spurs. He's on a lot of set pieces as well. He's just slightly more expensive than Richarlison is. So when I'm looking to try and get Haaland back, it does make it a little bit more difficult. This means that Gordon will drop to the bench. And up front, it is Alvarez, it is Solanke, and it is Ollie Watkins. Again, Pretty standard front line that we're looking at the moment. I do have a plan to buy Ivan Tony into my front line at some point. Maybe game week 24 is the current plan. But Alvarez is currently getting the Camsey armband and Foden is currently getting the vice captaincy. But if we get news that Kevin De Bruyne is likely to start, then that might move the Camsey armband away from Phil Foden because Foden playing out wide is not as good. Also, if we get news that Haaland is likely to be in the squad, I might move it off Alvarez just because... With Harlem being on the squad, it might reduce Alvarez's minutes, who's on penalties if they both are on the pitch, things like that. So that in that case, it would end up on Richarlison, who's probably my third pick at the moment. But right now, Alvarez captain with Phil Foden as vice captain in a 3-4-3. So having a look at what this means for my team over the next few weeks. So using planfpl.com, a fantastic site, particularly useful second half of the season when we need to plan our transfers for the blanks and doubles. Salah out and to go and buy Richarlison is the plan. Now it defaults to me giving me one transfer every week, but I do have two transfers available. The second transfer will be used on Alvarez up to Haaland, either in game week 22 or in game week 23, whenever he's going to be available. But I need to make sure that all of the transfers I'm planning leaves me enough money to do that as soon as he's available. So basically, every time I plan my transfers, I just do Alvarez to Haaland as the first thing so that I know I can do the other transfers I want and leave enough money for the big man up front. Going into game week 23, this is what I talk about. It gives me a real benching headache. In defense, Trippier will start and Gabriel will drop to the bench. And Gordon will have to find a way into my starting lineup at home to Luton. At the moment, it would probably be Saka at home to Liverpool. Richarlison away at Everton, probably not. Palmer at home to Wolves, probably not. It could be Foden away at Brentford, but I don't love benching that. Solanke at home to Forest. Watkins against Sheffield United. I don't really love benching any of these players in my team. So basically, I'm, my, my team's strong enough next week anyway that I will want to roll it in 23 regardless. Haaland might come in 23, in which case I'd roll the second free transfer anyway. But that's the issue with the Richarlison move. And whether it's Richarlison, whether it's De Bruyne, in theory, if it was Jota, I'd have the same issue, right? So I probably will roll and I will have a difficult decision to make going into game week 23. Going into game week 24, the plan would then to be to bring in Ivan Tony in place of Dominic Solanke. Dominic Solanke, uh, Bournemouth have Wolves in game week 29. So they're both doing pretty well in the cup. The chances of them both blank or one, well, one of them reaching the next round of the cup is pretty high. So the chance of Slanky playing in game week nine, 29 is quite low. So I'm okay to sell him. Ivan Tony has Wolves away in game week 24, then the Dublin 25, then West Ham in 26. And of course does play in game week 29 against Burnley as well. That would be my one free transfer going into game week 24. And then I would have two transfers going into game week 25. And we won't build massively past this, but... It would be down to what's going to happen with Liverpool going into this week. Because I'd be going into a potential double game week for Liverpool. Of course, it hasn't been announced yet. But we are expecting a double game week for Liverpool in game week 25 with only Trent. Now, if the double game week doesn't get announced, then that's absolutely fine. My team looks pretty solid. I could potentially bench Palmer that week away at Manchester City. Gabriel could come in, but the chances are he'd probably stay on the bench. The team looks pretty nice that week. Haaland captain. So it depends on if Liverpool get a double and if Salah is going to be back. Doesn't leave me much money in the bank to go and buy Salah if he is going to be back. And the other option is, well, if he's not going to be back, do I want Diego Jota, for example, in my team? Or do I want to go and buy someone like Darwin Nunes? I could buy both. Saka could go and I would go and add Diego Jota in there. Or Watkins could go and I would go and buy Darwin Nunes in there. The issue with that is that I'm adding a player, both the doubles in game with 25 if the double gets announced. But I'm adding a player that blanks in game with 26. So... Although Watkins has one fixture in game week 25, he has two in 25 plus 26. If Liverpool get the double, they only have two fixtures in 25 and 26. So I'm not necessarily sure it's massively worth it long term. But when it gets there, I probably will want another Liverpool asset. And given I have two transfers, something like Watkins to Darwin wouldn't be the end of the world. So that is something I'm considering. Saka could go. I could go and bring in... Um, Diego Jota in his place for example so there are a few things and it will keep an eye on how Salah is when we expect him back 
what's that's going to mean for the double for Liverpool if it gets announced in game week 25. Those of you asking, if it's going to get announced, it should be announced this week. And the chances are it should be announced for the game week 22 deadline, but definitely by Friday if it is going to happen. In terms of game week 22, just to flow back to that, Richarlison in for Salah is my one plan transfer with the Campsy on Julian Alvarez. But if Haaland is likely to start, then it will be Alvarez up to Haaland with my second transfer. And Erling Haaland, of course, will get the Campsy armband. But I don't think we're going to be in a position where we're seeing Erling Haaland start this game, in my opinion. So Alvarez captain is the most likely, with Foden being my vice captain as well, with Richarlison coming in. So let me know any questions you have in the comment section down below. There'll be a video final thoughts after some of the press conferences on Tuesday morning, and then finally a deadline stream on Tuesday afternoon, where we might get some early Man City team news, we might get some training news on the likes of Haaland. So I am waiting to make all of my transfers live on that deadline stream as well. So if you're not subscribed, make sure to subscribe so you get a reminder when that deadline stream, two hours before the deadline, does start like the video if you have not already drop any questions you have about your team your team selection your captaincy your key questions going into game week 22 and some of them might make it into my video tomorrow as well thank you all for watching and i'll be back again very soon